Give it a second. It says live video is starting, and I don't know if we started yet. Okay, welcome to the Flipping and Wholesaling Houses in New York show. I am Michael Pinter, where I teach you how to start flipping or wholesaling houses. And if you're already doing it, how to grow your business. I hope this is working. Let's hope it is. So got a question, and I was talking about variances. So var a variance is when you apply to the Board of Zoning Appeals in an area to build or do something that doesn't meet the zoning laws. So for example, you want to build on a property that's 55 foot wide and it's required to be 60 foot wide, for example, or you want to put a property that's five feet from the side yard, but you need eight feet from the side yard, um, or you want to build a property that's uh, 3,000 square feet when, uh, you know, the, the, the whatever. All, there's all kinds of zoning restrictions everywhere, certainly in Long Island. And when you want to build something or get approved for something um, that doesn't meet those, you get a variance. So I got a question which says, uh, and I mentioned that very often neighbors are going to challenge it. They're going to come to the hearing and they're going to say, we don't want this. So this is the question I got. Isn't it good for other neighbors if you get granted for variance since their property will get the same variance automatically, hence their property value increase? Hence, I would expect them to support it. So this is one I really wanted to just respond to. No, but I'm going to go and talk about it now for... About eight minutes. So you're thinking very logically, but the, your logic doesn't work. So first of all, nothing is automatically approved. So if I have a house that gets approved to build, let's say, fifty on a 55-foot wide lot, it doesn't mean that the house next to me is going to get approved to build on a 55-foot wide lot. It doesn't mean that at all. It's one of the reasons why they have variance hearings is because every single situation is different, right? Let's say I want to build a height requirement high, too high, higher than I'm allowed. You know, if there's no neighbors, they might approve it. Or if the neighbors, it doesn't block anybody's view. But if somebody's view is going to be blocked, they're going to show up at the hearing and go, I don't want this because they're going to block my view, for one example. But again, nothing is automatic. Really nothing, right? Literally every property in an area can get approved for the variance, and then you can be stuck in the middle, ask for the same variance, and not get granted it. Nothing is guaranteed. It's one of the reasons why anytime you take something um, and you're going to need a variance, it, there's nothing guaranteed, right? Another reason why most builders do not will not take a piece of land from you that's not automatically buildable as of right that means like you can just build it without a variance even if it's something that would seemingly be very um that would easily get approved because they don't know if it can get approved and for a builder's perspective the the land has zero value if it, they can't build on it right so they really want a, a building plans approved already um and i've sold a bunch of lots to builders where i had building plans approved now so number one, it's not automatic. Number two, the fact that the va property value is going to go up is, is also completely subjective, right? The fact that I can build close to my neighbor, for some people that's good, and for some people that's bad, they don't want to be close to their neighbor. So it really depends on exactly what the variance given is and how it may or may not affect your property value. But the main thing is you're thinking logically and ahead, and most people don't think that way. Most neighbors just don't want anything built. And I'm on a planning board in my village, and I can tell you I look back at minutes from 100 years ago, and people are screaming that if this this massive eight-acre lot gets split into two, that the whole neighborhood is going to go down the, down the toilet. People just don't want, they don't want construction next to them, and I understand that. People don't want more congestion, right? They don't want more people, they don't want more cars, they don't want more you know, and, and, I mean, that's just like your neighbor. I don't want more cars. I don't want, I, I like open land. Even if the land is an eyesore, you'd be shocked how many people would say, I don't want another house there. I just don't. I don't know who's going to move in. People don't want things to change. I just had a situation where they, uh, a tenant had been in, in a property that I'm looking to buy for, oh, I think, almost 40 years. And I need to get back into the property. And I'm getting pushed back. And I knew I would. Because... The tenant doesn't want anything to change. The tenant is paying, I think, three thousand dollars less than they should be paying. Um, the tenant's paying a ridiculously low amount, and the tenant knows that they're paying a ridiculously low amount. And in general, tenants don't want to make it easy for anybody to come buy the property because they're afraid that their party's going to be at end. I understand. That. Well, the same thing happens with neighbors. They just don't want anything to change. So I, I, I think of variance hearings I went to where people said really some of the stupidest things I've ever heard um, in situations. And thankfully, eventually, the Board of Zoning Appeals realized how stupid it was. But 
and I've, I've, I've gone to uh, Board of Zoning Appeals uh, hearings in town of Hempstead and other places, and you cannot imagine um, the absurdity that comes out of people's mouths. And, and by the way, the planning board meetings that I have, you know, I've been on the board, people will come and say things that are just insane. You know, I, I'm, we have part of our, our village is really nice, right? One acre minimum, big houses. This guy has like a three acre lot, wants to divide it to two. He probably could divide it to three as of right. And the guy... Two do- one door down from him said that the traffic was going to be un- impossible because of one extra house. You know, I laugh when I hear these things, but people say whatever they want to say. Uh oh, sorry, I lost you for a second. People say whatever they want to say, and the same thing happens with neighbors. They just don't want anything to change, and neighbors are always concerned. I mean, especially listen, if you're encroaching on somebody's property. Let's say let's say there's a standard in, in town of Hempstead is you need a 15 foot aggregate side yard setback with a five foot minimum so i can do five feet on one ten feet on the other um some other villages like want more they want ten feet on each side but so if i'm coming and i want to build four feet 11 inch four feet 11 inches because that's just the way it works out um maybe there's a house there already and i'm subdividing i guarantee the neighbor next to him is going to say well why 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 do you got to build an inch closer to me than you have than, than you're allowed to that's just the way things work um People, you know, this the NIMBY not in my backyard uh, attitude is even more prevalent when you're actually building something, right? And I understand people are upset that there's going to be construction that's going to be A, an eyesore, B, loud and annoying for, you know, a long period of time. It could be a year. It's typical for construction, like, let take a year. Um, there's also, it could be drainage issues, right? But, you know, you I, I had a neighbor put in a pool next to me. My, my backyard has been much worse flooding since then nothing to do about it i mean but so i'm not gonna go fight there I, but there are people who will there are people who, who who really look at anything being done to them um as an injustice that has to be corrected and you'll see those are the people that come out at at, at bza meetings right those are the people that come out the people who feel like they have to correct an injustice oh my god there's gonna be another house on my block my thoughts are tough shit that's my thoughts um but that's not how they look at it. Now, I understand if something's being done that's egregious, right? So if someone wants to build a house on a 30-foot wide property sandwiched in between two people who have decent, you know, properties that are decent size. I understand saying that's crazy, right? Well, what do we need it for? Um, but if somebody wants to move a foot over from what they were supposed to or a foot higher, you know, it's even in situations like that neighbors will come out and start complaining and it's always the people who feel it's their job to correct injustice basically people who during the pandemic were yelling at other people who weren't wearing masks and were screaming at people who weren't who weren't getting vaccinated that's in general the, the, the things that i see in other words i don't know i don't care where you stand on masks or vaccines i'm not making a i'm not taking a position on that all i'm saying is that if someone else wants to do that the idea I, I, you see somebody walking by. I, I was in California for for part of the pandemic, and I would get yelled at because I was wearing a mask when I'm when I'm walking by myself on a street across the street from people who were wearing masks. They would yell at me. What what do they care? I'm walking by myself. I'm outside. So that's the kind of thing where that person, I'm sure, if their neighbor wanted any type of variance whatsoever, would show up at the meeting and say. We, this is going to completely change the character of the area. That's what happens, and it's hard to avoid. I told you the way to to, to to circumvent it is to go to these people first, show them plans, ask for their input, ask them what they would do, and then try to try to involve them. Sometimes that gets them on, you know in on it, and they feel like they're a part of it. But I don't think there's any way to avoid in most situations, um, most variances from having a neighbor show up and, and protest. So I hope this was helpful. If you're interested in all the ways I can help you, go to howtoflipnewyork.com. I have some other links, but I don't know what they are right now uh, for my co- for one-on-one coaching. You can go to coaching.howtoflipnewyork.com for information on that, but I have to change that. And then uh, there's new system, new system dot learn to flip at wholesale.com. I got to get better handle on my links. My links changed recently and my programs have changed. But if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're watching on any media channel, please give the thumbs up. And please keep the comments coming. I got this from Ali. Uh, so thank you for the comment. 
Um, you can ask any question you want. It does not have to be about the video you're watching. I try to get back as soon as I can, back to all the comments as soon as I can. It's a simple answer, I'll just reply. If it's something that I've covered recently, I'll send you a link to a video on it. And if it's something brand new, I will do a brand new video on it. So thank you very, very much for watching.